video is going to be about free trial conversion rates and you know what our average good or great conversion rates for free trials I mean in this video it's going to be outlining some industry numbers and some from my own experience and from my own research as well but I'm going to come from a place of my own experience which is actually going to probably give more relative insight to maybe the gym business or any type of service business so if you're in that field this is for you if you're in a field of maybe software or maybe an online platform coaching or whatever it is in terms of free trials this can also apply it just applies more digitally right but i do want to say that the human aspect is very important regardless okay and that's what is the biggest differentiator okay when we talk about free trial conversion rates we're talking about you posting something online or acquiring free trials from uh, potential customers and they become a free trial for you so now when these people become a free trial or they requested a free trial they're at a point now right now where they said said yes to a free trial of your product or service right or whatever it is and at that point remember that they're just at a stage where they have said yes to it so now this is a part where this, this is a stage where they have you know you have their attention so now while you have their attention, what are you going to do to feed that attention with, um, you know, some content or some information or something to win them over to get them to engage in the free trial? So, for example, let's say um, somebody is interested in taking a free trial. OK, so they are they have expressed interest. They've sent you their information They said, yes, we want to, you know, we want to take partake in this free trial. That's the attention. And then now at this point, your objective would be to get them to use or engage with the product or service that they have said yes to. So this becomes the engagement part, right? And this is the part where they step into another step of the conversion process where they are actually using it. So you may have 10 start where they're interested and you might have eight or six or whatever number that is um actually engage and partake and actually get their hands in the clay and use it and then you go to the next stage where you're at the um sorry the investment part where they have invested their time so they have they have put their hands in they've engaged but they've also invested their time in maybe working out in the gym um or they put in their effort into building something maybe they built some some something inside your product or maybe they've taken part of your course and they've done some homework. So that becomes what the investment part, right? And that's the third stage. And then the fourth stage is the conversion where they actually end up, you know, a no brainer if step one, two, and three is good, they're probably gonna convert automatically. But at that point, you may need to have some human contact with them, or you may wanna have human contact all the way through, or maybe, um, you know, some personal contact, a video or whatever it is to get through to them, to get them to convert, right? To encourage them, you know, and give them reasons why they made the right decision. So now this process is very important and we're working on this in our business right now that we do get a lot of free trials, but we're focusing on how can we get them using our software, uh, you know, and make it their own software so that it's not about use ours and it's mine and yours. It's about them coming in and literally partaking, putting their hands in the clay and making it their own. So now they're using the software and they're making things of their own and now it becomes part of them and it becomes a no brainer for them to actually, you know, put in their credit card and pay for it. I mean, granted it's priced right, it makes sense. There's a lot of factors in business, right? You've got to think of many different angles and I'm just giving you an idea of the software, an idea of the gym, but this applies to anything. It could be a coaching program. It could be anything. It could be you just want a product you want to sell and they might want to try it first before they buy it. For example, driving a car, maybe a bicycle. Maybe they want to, you know, it's very rare actually if you think about it. Um, when you buy a bike, bicycle, you're doing reviews, you're looking online or whatever. Very rarely do, do they allow you to try it. I think there are some places that do or maybe running shoes you know running well running shoes you do try on people do try them on and they put them on and you know they put them there's probably not the investment part where they ran a marathon but at least there's the trial phase where they actually put it on and see how it fits 
Um, same thing goes for clothing, right? I mean, nowadays with the online sales, you don't really get that try aspect, but you can use virtual tools and stuff like that to have them, for example, let's say glasses, you have glasses and they might put on glasses virtually and they try them on virtually, or maybe a, a t-shirt, they stand there and it superimposes the t-shirt on you or whatever it is, right? So there's lots of aspects here that you can, you know, work on and you can create that interaction. And then there's also the other side where you can create that interaction by just simply, um, you know, you reaching out to them, you know, and having that human contact. Now they're like, hmm, I tried three companies and out of all three companies, only the second one, the people actually worked with me. And the other two, they didn't even care. Like, I don't think they care. They probably do. They, I mean, to, to, to be honest, maybe they do, but, you know, but they don't care enough to reach out about, you know, to me, because it's about me. It's not about everybody, right? Everyone that comes in as a customer, it's not about, you know, it's not about the whole audience, it's not about the whole customer base. They are only thinking about themselves and that, there's nothing wrong with that. They're not being selfish. It's just a matter of they can only think about themselves when they're buying your product or service. They're not thinking about some other person, what it did for them. Let's be honest. They're not, they're not, you know, they might hear from someone, yeah, I did this and this for me. That might make them go and look for you, but it's chances are they're seeking different benefits out of the product than, you know, than they are, than their friends are. Right. So you've got to cater to them. So that's why everything tech now is starting to cater experiences individually. That's why AI and all these things, machine learning, you know, is working on uh, customizing experiences. If you look in Amazon, when people go in there, they're serving you ads, they're showing you things according to your interests, right? They're collecting data points for a reason to personalize your service, okay? And it's done digitally so they can scale it, right? But now let's look at, you know, coming back to the topic here, what are reasonable free trial conversion rates? Well, you know what? There's really no number. There's industry numbers. And if that's what you want to shoot for, then go for it. But if you want to be the unicorn and say you want 80%, go for it, right? Like, do it. You you can be that one person. On, like, if the average is 25, 25%, one out of every four, or one out of every five is 20%, and you want to be that average, and that's what you're shooting for, go ahead and shoot for it, right? But if you want to be in that metric of 25 that they say, that's the average, and the lower part is 5% and the upper part is 80%, but yet you want to look at the average and make that your goal, then that's up to you. So really the answer to this, I don't want to give you an answer according to the research, but from what I see that you should be looking for, uh, you know, some of the top experts are saying that you should not limit yourself with the amount and you should be looking for uh, anywhere from 20 to 50%, but those same experts and one of them that I follow he basically says that, you know, he recommends going for 100%, you know, and you always can fall, you know, a little bit lower than that. And I honestly echo that because it makes sense in our gyms and all that. We used to do at some points one out of three, which is 33%. And then the other ones we would convert over time, right? So it was almost two out of three in certain locations. Now that's the gym business. I mean, and these, these are principles of business and they apply. And the biggest thing that Jay Abraham said, which is a famous marketer, he created this whole study and he used to use the marketing strategies from a dentist in maybe like a uh, different type of business, right? So maybe a dentist into a gym or a gym into like a law office, right? So these are all relative, like, because the thing is principles are principles. And if you use something unique from another industry, you can definitely come bring it into your industry and you can be like that unicorn in your industry. You're like, wow, these guys do it totally different. But you're just using an idea from another industry, right? It's, it's nothing new. And they probably got it from somewhere else. It's not stealing or anything. It's sharing, right? And, you know, it's not like you do it exactly. You model yourself after that, right? That's what it comes down to. So great conversion rates are, I'm going to say, 10 out of 10, 100%, aim for the best, and see what you come up with. All right? Anyways, hope you liked the video. Any questions, anything, you know, we're always here. And if you're catching the replay, good luck with everything. Take care.